What's up, YouTube family? This week's podcast episode is all about how to end your suffering today because it is a choice and you have the power to do it. Doug is an incredible human, just a powerful leader in the world of mindfulness and self-development, personal help, all the fun things like that. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, make sure you comment. Tell me what you think. Love you guys. Doug, my man, how we doing? Happy to be up in Park <laughs> City. Yes, we are up in Park City, Utah. Um, what's crazy is that you were on my first podcast show, the one before this one. And that what was, was that called? It was the Goal Link Show. That's right. So this one's better. You think? Oh, five times. I think it's better times. too. Infinitely yeah. better. <laughs> Not just like the name, but the actual content. Um, but that was almost two years ago, which is crazy. And so I know our life has definitely changed a lot since then. Yeah. Both of our lives. What's the thing that sticks out to you most about like what's changed in your life? In the last two years? Uh-huh. I think two years ago, I wasn't on planet Earth. Huh. I was so blown out. Like I just started this whole new direction down my life of like personal healing and psychedelics and spirituality. And I just had been blown open. And now I feel very like I've come back very grounded, uh, Cool. kind of like, it's almost like a rock ship where you blow out and then slowly with a parachute, you kind of slowly fall back to earth. And so, yeah, everything's changed in the last two years, but, uh, mm -hmm. I'm just really happy to be human right now. <laughs> so it's currently October 2020. Why are you happy to be human? Um, because it is beautiful outside. The leaves are changing. I enjoyed my drive up here mm -hmm. and I have a strong, healthy body and I have mm -hmm. my own business and I learned how to play golf this summer. <laughs> like actual, like, yeah. Cause you've played it before, no. but you, you've never played. It before I learned this golf summer. this summer. First time. Yeah. Wow. That's surprising. Yeah. I took golf. I have golf, a golf lesson once a week. That's cool. Yeah. I enjoy it. Like I love being human. <laughs> so it cool. Right. Isn't that, see, that's cool, dude. I love that. See, like you're actually like taking golf lessons. Yeah. Cause a lot of adults, we won't like just like go take a lesson. The hardest thing I learned was skiing. So when I was 28, two years ago, mm -hmm. I took my first ski lesson and I took it up here at Deer Valley. And my first lesson, it was me and like three other eight year olds <laughs> on the bunny hill. <laughs> I love that. And then me just six, three, two fifteen. <laughs> guy and then uh um, yeah i was falling they, i learned the pizza hot dog thing you know yeah yeah no shame no i want to learn how to ski i lived in utah i've never learned how to ski so that's dope dude yeah so for for your business um you have your own business will you just i mean explain that to the people we're gonna you know promo and all that fun stuff but i think it gives kind of how you said you were out in space actually tell what your business is slash purpose slash mission all yeah. of that but then how the business has evolved as you've come down as you sure. floated back to earth yeah so the daily shifts is the name of my company um, mm -hmm. it started as an app and it's an app in the app store we have incredible reviews our average rating is a 4.9 and a half boom um and that is a daily shift right so it's these tasks especially with people attracted to your podcast who are into personal development and healing yeah it's daily reminders or daily shifts to get aligned. And so uh, within the app, there's levels. You start as a level one. And so you really just start with basic gratitude. What are you grateful for today? You know, what were happy moments um, that you had during the, throughout the day? And as you level up, we, we, tie, we tie in the mind, body, and the soul. So hmm. checklist for the soul, basically. So we're going to go over your sleep hygiene. Are you hydrating? Are you moving your body? And then for the mental aspect, are you learning? Are you growing? Are you becoming the best version of yourself? And f with spirituality, it's are you practicing gratitude? Are you in um, savoring that relationship you have with whatever the divine is to you? Mm -hmm. So we started with the app. Um, huge success when we launched the app. And just kind of it happened. I've, I've been a big believer in trusting the universe, trusting source. Yeah. 
And you were, just side note, <laughs> Doug was the first one that I consciously remember at least to told me to tell me to surrender. Surrender. Yeah. And I was like, what? No. Yeah. That's like weak. Yeah. So it's so interesting mm-hmm. that people um, relate surrender with weakness. Mm-hmm. Um, when really I think it's the ultimate form of strength. Agreed. Um, so kind of surrendered to the universe and then turned mm-hmm. into um, an online course. And I had a company reach out and we sat down and they interviewed me for like two or three days with a transcriber for this course, for this course. Cool. And then talked about my story, my beliefs, you know, and then we created, you know, a 10 module online course. And then we created a 75 page workbook to go with it. Yeah, that's dope. Then we created uh, a weekly challenge video series. Then we created a blog. Then we created a newsletter. Then we created an ebook and I just <laughs> signed a book deal. And now I take yeah. private clients and it, you know, it started way back the first, Thing ever was I st- the daily shifts was going to be a physical journey journal like a morning routine journal mm. and now it's a whole personal development based in spirituality self I call it human development program yeah I love that dude so as like <clears throat> that's a whole journey and like step by step and all of the process which one of those steps I mean side note before we get into that I want to congratulate you thank you for the book appreciate it I mean all of that as well yeah but does the book feel the most surreal or what feels the most surreal to you? Yeah. The book's still a couple months out. The book won't be, yeah. I mean, I think it'll be feel more surreal when it's like, I see it at Barnes mm-hmm. and Noble. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's, I, and it's just, I just know still that's still just a stepping stone to something bigger. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there's ever going to be a moment where it's like, Oh, I've made it. I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not chasing a finish line. I'm not chasing an arrival point. I'm literally like, feel like I'm a passenger on this planet. And it's like, how can I go experience the most amount of stuff before I die? Mm -hmm. And that book sounds cool. And then when the (laughs) book's done, it's like, what's next, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and along the way, how can I help people and provide value to other people who are in, you know, distressed situations or who are suffering and how can I help lessen the suffering of others? Yeah. I love that dude. Um, what has what sticks out in your mind with what have you healed or what what has come up personally in your own human development over the past like through the process of the daily shifts yeah so there's two things that have kind of are pretty fresh on my mind and as you know i know this is still a constant evolution and Mm -hmm. we're always learning stuff along the way but the thing there's two things that stick out to me right now the first thing or had a a big aha moment was on the topic of surrender Mm -hmm. right we talk about how we need to not resist negative emotions. Right? I always talk about feel your feelings, yeah. right? You know, especially as a fear coach, you know, you know, to, you need to gain a relationship with all parts of yourself, yes. including the negative ones. And so, yeah, that was pretty, I was pretty aware of that. And so I did a pretty good job, you know, of this healing journey of not resisting negative emotions. But what I didn't realize was, I was actually still clinging to the mm. very good emotions. So for example, I would have moments where I was out with friends or whatever. And it was just kind of like, Oh my gosh, this is the perfect moment. I don't ever want this to end. Like, don't go home yet. Like we're still hanging out. Or <laughs> I was on a really good day to be like, Oh my gosh, we just had an amazing date and dinner and drinks. Now let's like, let's keep the night going, mm-hmm. you know, or anytime I see something beautiful, like the f- leaves changing or a rainbow, it's like, I got to take out my phone and take a picture of it. Cause I'm just clinging to these moments. Mm. And that's just as harmful as resisting the negative emotions. And so the, a big learning curve or big learning breakthrough for me this summer has been like, okay, don't cling either. Just let Mm. the moment happen, whether it's really good or really bad, you have to let it happen because there's going to be bad, more bad moments in my life and there's going to be more really great moments. And so when I stopped clinging to these beautiful moments Mm -hmm. this summer, it actually deepened the richness of the moment I was in because there wasn't like a fear of loss mentality. Yes. And so it really heightened the whole experience. And that was, that was a big aha breakthrough moment for me this summer. Dude, that I love that. And I think most people, we view it the opposite way though. Right. Is because it's like, if you're not clinging, then you're not enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So you said it deepened the richness. How? Yeah. It's just because I was, it made me more present. Right. Instead of in the back of my head, it's like, okay, how can I manipulate the current (laughs) moment in front of me to last longer? Right. That takes away from the presence of the current situation. Mm -hmm. And when I was able to remove that, and I mean, it's obviously I'm still, it's still a work in progress, but when I was able to just surrender that, 
and just be a lot more present. I, mean, I think any to anyone listening to this would know that being completely present in a moment is going to heighten the experience or enrich the experience. Yeah, that's dope. And what was the second aha? Uh-huh. So the second aha uh-huh was, you know, I've been thinking a lot about why people suffer mm. and it really breaks down to the reason you're suffering is because the world isn't unfolding the way you think it's supposed to. Ooh, I love that. Will you repeat that? Yeah. So the reason you're in pain or the reason you're suffering, right, is because the world isn't unfolding the way you think it's supposed to. That's it. I mean, that really is bottom line yep. foundational. That's <laughs> that's the only reason you're in pain. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, so I'm like, okay, how do we perceive the world? What, what, causes someone to believe the world needs to unfold a certain way. And so a lot of these are our biases or um, the stories really of what we tell ourselves of how the world's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And, and a lot of these times it's so, I mean, we have, we have conscious stories that we tell ourselves and then we have subconscious stories that we have to tell ourselves. And so for me, my examples are that, that are so blatant. They're kind of, they're pretty big stories was growing up. I was a fat kid. And I learned that story when I was like in second grade. What was that? Like, how did you learn that? So someone, usually the story you attach yourself to or the label you attach yourself to, someone actually else gave you that label. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, usually wasn't yourself. It was the kid in elementary school or the teacher that says you're too dumb or whatever it may be. And it's usually just projection. We don't realize at the time, obviously a third grader doesn't understand what projection is. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was in second grade. And, um, I was at recess and I had a specific brand of basketball shorts Mm. that, um, have the size of the shorts on the outside of the, of the shorts. So it tells you like medium, large, small, extra large. And I I was in second grade. And then there was a sixth grader at the time who's wearing the exact same shorts as me, same brand. His were a medium, mine were a large or an extra large, right? Mm. And he's four grades older than me. And this was a little scrawny kid. (laughs) And one day at recess, he was like, oh, you're in four grades younger than me, only in second grade and you're wearing a size large, Mm. fatty or something. And that was the first time I was like, oh, am I, there's, is there something wrong with me? Yeah. There's something wrong with me. I'm the fat kid. And so I created that label that I was a fat kid. And so I played that story out over and over. So it's like, when I'm at a birthday party with my friends and there's pizza, oh, I'm the fat kid. What does the fat kid do? I have, you know, and so I, I got bigger and, and continued to play out those stories. And you, yeah, I really want to, Doug, thank you for like taking us there because it's, yeah, as a second, third grader, you don't know, like you just believe it as fact Yeah, and you, and you replay that story. And I know you're taking us like to the place of like huh. choice of suffering and in, in, like all, all these things. But why do you think, why do we continue to recreate and live those stories? Because from my experience with myself and with clients is that because it's exactly what you said, like we believe it's true. So we find the evidence to support that. Right. What is your experience with that? Yeah, I think a lot of us wrap our identity around it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so uh, whether it, and usually it's, it's not like the surface story is I'm the fat kid, the depth of the story yes. is I'm not good enough. Yes. Right. And it usually goes, so, usually goes, something's wrong with me. Right. I'm the fat kid. I'm smart. I'm too short. I'm whatever. That means something's wrong with me. And because something's wrong with me, I'm unlovable. Boom. Yep. And so then we go out into the world trying to validate our love because deep down we don't love ourselves and we don't believe we're worthy of love. So we need external validation to fill that wound. Boom. Um, and so we play out these stories because validation feels really good, especially if you have a huge hole. And so mm-hmm. we'll play the story out subconsciously, right? Triggering an emotion or attention. And it's usually so subconscious. It's like we're trying to gain attention or whatnot or create some scene, you know, to, to fill this void that we want and to, the, that feels good when it's validated. So, yeah, I mean, the reason we attach ourselves to these labels is because another part of it is too is like – Take all the labels you have because not all labels are bad, mm-hmm. right? So all the labels you have is you know, you're a son, you're a brother, you're an entrepreneur, you're a, I don't know how old you are, but late 20s or early mm-hmm. 30s, 
fit, you know, mm-hmm. white male living, you know, we have all these labels. If you're to take all of those away, it's kind of scary. Cause then it's mm-hmm. like identity credits. I don't know who I am. So it's really easy to attach to labels because they're safe. Yes. So even though it might seem like counterintuitive where it's like, okay, do I really want to attach to the fat kid label? But at the same time, it does give you identity, which is safe. Mm -hmm. And it makes you feel some sort of love sure, or validation. Right, right. Seen, I guess. Yeah. So we play those stories out. So those are conscious stories. I mean, a lot of, we all have a conscious story. And so the way to find out, if someone's listening to this and like, okay, well, I don't know what my conscious story is. The way to figure it out is like, okay, what would you be so ashamed or so embarrassed if someone found out about you? Mm. Like, what are you trying to hide from the world? And that's an easy way to find your story. Is it credit card debt? Is it you're an alcoholic? You have substance abuse? Is it you would die if someone saw you naked, right? Like whatever it may be, it's like, oh, you know, I don't ever want to be in a conversation about politics because I don't feel like I'm smart enough, you know, whatever it may be, like whatever you'd be like absolutely frightened if someone found out about you, that's usually the way to start finding your story. And then once you kind of discover what it is, you know, you ask yourself, okay, where did you learn that? And think of the earliest memory of when you learned that. And even if it's something really, really stupid, that's actually the story. That's where it began. Mm -hmm. Right. And it might be the weirdest thing where I was at recess one day. And then for 45 seconds in my life, isn't that crazy? A kid labeled me as a fat kid and I played that story out for over and ever. And what really was going on. And if you zoom out from that story, looking at it now, it's really easy to be like, Oh my gosh, that kid, he was really scrawny. He was in sixth grade. He was probably a really, really insecure dude. Yeah. Right. And he was, didn't want it to be validated. So he just projected his own trauma of being the small wimpy kid onto me. So the story he gave me literally had nothing to even do with me. Mm-hmm. It was just a projection of this own, this kid. So that's, what's really fascinating. That, that really is fascinating. So before I took us on a tangent, <laughs> so, so you have the, so you have the story. Yeah. So you found out you, you know, you, re, you replayed the story. Then what happened? As far as what? I just like in continuing like in life. Yeah. And so the, we have our conscious stories and, um, I think just the way you heal them is, Mm -hmm. is okay. Who needed the healing in that situation? It was second grade Doug. Okay. What was the, what was the wound? Okay. I'm the fat kid. I'm unlovable. So it's just, just all, all, as cheesy as it sounds, it all just goes back to self love. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. And it, it sounds corny or whatever, cheesy, but it's just, it's, it's raw. It's the real, it's the real deal. And so the second thing I kind of learned from the summer is, yeah. thank you for bringing right, us back. <laughs> yeah. Second thing, yeah. right. Is we have conscious stories. Like I know I'm, I knew I, when I was in sixth grade, I knew I was a bad kid, knew that conscious subconscious stories we have, um, are really, really deep rooted that though something occurred when we, when we were little um, that completely shaped our worldview. Right. So this goes back to the story. So for me in my fifth ayahuasca ceremony, I dealt with when I was uh, sexually abused is when I was six years old and it wasn't malicious. Um, but it happened a couple of times. I was abused. So how do you, so when you say it's not malicious, what is just it? Like- it was, uh, it was my best friend mm. who was eight years old at the time who was just curious. Mm. And so he wasn't trying to hurt me. Like it wasn't like, it wasn't like an older guy who, you know, took me into the closet and like, you know, it was, it was very innocent. It wasn't, Mm. it wasn't out of, yeah, like I said, it wasn't malicious. So a couple of times, uh, it was my best guy friend. And I remember just feeling so violated and like, not scared, but just confused. I didn't understand what was going on. And, I remember what happened later was when we were in junior high, he got in a car accident and died. Wow. And my, it was interesting is my first emotion or first thought when I heard was like a relief. It was like, Oh, now no one will ever know this deep secret. And so I remember like, okay, cool. No one will ever know this. Mm. It's locked. It's locked. We're putting that thing in the closet. We're never touching this thing again the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Didn't tell a single single soul at this point. So fast forward another 14 years. I'm 28. 
and I'm in an ayahuasca session and it comes up. And I remember thinking like, why is this experience taking me here? And I'm like, oh shit, like there's probably work to do here. Mm-hmm. And I remember immediately when like I, I got this vision of like being in his basement. Was that the exact experience? In ayahuasca? No. Yeah, it uh, happened in his basement. So yeah. you relived. Yeah, I was reliving yeah. the experience the way oh. it really happened. And I remember it during the ayahuasca, I'm like, why is this here? Like, I, why am I even thinking about this right now? This is so weird. I'm like, oh, wait, this is this is what medicine work does. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, let's see what's here. <laughs> yeah. And so I kind of relived it. And then what I've really unpacked, and it basically just showed me, you know, what was going, what may have been going on in his life and how mm. someone might have been doing that to him and yada, yada, yada. And I really healed, I really healed from the experience. I just was able to get a, I was able to take myself out of the experience and kind of get a cosmic perspective of it and heal. But it then showed me, you know, how it's played out in my life and how really the combination of the two stories um, really affected my way to meet new guy friends. Mm -hmm. Because what would happen was I always had these really, really big walls up when I'd meet a new guy because mm-hmm. I wasn't even aware of it. Like I said, subconscious story. In the back of my head, it's like, don't abuse me. It's dangerous. It's like, dangerous. Yeah. This is unsafe. Mm-hmm. Last time I had a really close, my first best yeah, friend ever did this to me. So I would always have these really big walls up when I would meet new guy friends Um and I, and I, looking back at it now, it's crazy. It's putting this together somewhere is I would always, when I met a cool new guy, whatever, mm-hmm. um, we became friends, I would always make a note of it of like t- bringing up dating. Like, who are you dating? Mm. Oh, I just want to date with this girl. And I'd like show him a picture of a really pretty girl. And what I'm really doing is I'm telling him, Hey, I'm not into you. I'm not a homosexual. So don't come on to me. Interesting. That's really what subconsciously what I was saying. That that was the whole purpose of all that. And so that was really profound. And then I've really just done a lot of work on like with guy friends, like, okay, it's okay. Like you can make guy friends, you know, Mm -hmm. it's totally fine. Um, And so that's been really transformative for me this summer too, but it's taken a lot of work. And so, you know, that kind of just breaks down the difference between a conscious story and the subconscious story, because, you know, it reminds me of the Carl Jung quote where he says, until you make the subconscious conscious, it'll guide your whole life and you'll call it fate. Yeah. And so that was one of those moments where I like got deep in its subconscious, pulled that out. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. That was still guiding my whole life. And once you kind of really do the work on it, it, you know, it's, I've made amazing new cool homies this summer. Mm -hmm. And so it's been great. I've been really grateful for her doing the work on that. Dude, Doug, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Um, like for real, just like deeply. Thank you. Um, cause it's still, even though you've healed it, like, does it even still feel easy to you to share that to me? Yeah, it does. I mean, Interesting. for me, that's the beauty of the work, right? Cause it's cool. like, I've done double the work I've done my <laughs> fat kid work. So I love yeah. myself now. I love mm-hmm. who I am. I don't need anyone else. It's not in like a arrogant way, but I don't need external validation. Yeah. And, and I've done, I'm proud of the work I've done. I've done really deep, intense personal work the last two and a half, three years. And so, I'm proud of the fact that I went and healed that because, you know, it's been life changing for me and it's, and, and if my words can encourage one other person to go do the mm-hmm. same thing and they have a similar benefit, then it's like, how awesome is that? Yeah, dude, that's awesome. So how you healed it. So it sounds like, so ayahuasca, you know, plant medicine for people who don't know, but what else? Yeah. So I think the plant medicine exposed it. Mm. It kind of showed me what I needed to do on. And so here's the thing with plant medicine, like, the real work isn't done in ceremony. It just exposes what you need to do work on. Mm -hmm. It gives you all of your homework. And so, you know, when I initially got into plant medicine work, the first couple months, I was like telling the whole world about it. Oh my gosh, everyone needs to do this. And then all of a sudden you get into the real work Mm -hmm. and the real work's done in the day to day, which is now. And Mm -hmm. it's like, damn, I don't know if (laughs) people, I don't mean, Go when you're ready because it is a lot of work. It was two years of my mm-hmm. life where I was experiencing really intense emotions, doing really intense healing. And, you know, you ask, what did I do? Mm-hmm. And a lot of that I've packaged up and that's my that's what my workbook is. Boom. So my personal workbook, when you, when you do our course or you decide to work with me one-on-one, is we actually do a lot of techniques, a lot of work that I did. We do it together. Cool. And so I did it myself. 
healed it myself and now I'm trying to share that with other people. And so, you know, it's a 10, it's a 10 week, 75 page intensive experience. <laughs> I love that dude. What's, um, how do you, you mentioned, you know, eight years old, how does, you know, whether it's malicious or not, right. How do you not take that personally? Like how did you evolve to have that cosmic perspective? Well, it's just not happening in this moment. Right. Mm. And so that was, I was sick. So that was 25 years ago when that happened. And so often than not, most of us suffer, um, a, cause the world is unfolding how we think it's supposed to, but we're still caught up on emotions or experiences that aren't happening right now from the past, from the past. Like he's not molesting me right now. Like them, I'm like, you know, rest in peace, my dear friend, like he's yeah. not even on the planet anymore, you know? So at this point to let that still affect me is still, is it would be a personal choice. What's Dude, up okay. dope humans. So I know you this were where we're going just <laughs> with this episode. Because um, Doug is the man and this is, and great. I've had him twice. Wrote something he about has this. blessed us twice been, in our membership you know, called the freedom school. By you so if you were looking for a like minded community, like your soul family, um, Plus to really get some like when you group say coaching that, and I totally work with agree. amazing yeah. experts every single AF. week, yeah. when the you Freedom say, School's like, for you. So I invite you to join. If yeah. you vibe break, with I mean, this it, energy, you want more from me, you because want more of this community, no longer happening. more from the experts no that I molested. know so if I choose to let um, this from me. the podcast and beyond, yeah. it is my choice. Join the yeah. Freedom School. It's an amazing community. I have made such a Awesome Suffering is not a choice. Uh, people the, come to if, retreats. The they sign up for coaching. But more than that, there are people that I love. And you're going to suffer. Um, so I'd love moment. to meet you. I'd love to mm. dive into right. this work That's with you human experience. if you feel called. Really if you do, Highly go to feeling-free.com. And this is where you can sign up. And this is where you can sign up for retreats. This is where you can sign up for coaching if you would prefer one-on-one. There are free downloads. So if you go to feeling-free.com, you can get a free download of emotions. my magical manifesting guide on you. so feeling-free.com right. is the thing isn't happening just anymore really get to know me right <laughs> does it mean all right that love it, you guys there's Let's work to continue do this you, right? combo you have to do the work you know especially if you've never done personal work that's the hardest part because you're doing personal work for all of your years of existence up to this point you have like 30 <laughs> years backlogged yeah. right to do the work and once you get over that initial hump and you get like to even is what i call it <laughs> then it's like yeah we're just on maintenance mode you know things are going to happen mm -hmm. okay cool i can i can surrender that moment back into the universe right and so it gets really easy but that initial you know i'm assuming most people listening like are still involved in their initial personal work trying to deprogram all these things when they're yes. kids um and that's a lot of work and it's not something that you're going to heal overnight but what happens is when you f truly understand what's going on right now you realize that nothing has anything to do with you and not that nothing matters. It's that everything matters because nothing has to do with you. So if you just look at it on a scientific level, like I always ask, okay, how did this moment get here? Like, how did we even get here? Like you realize what needed to happen mm -hmm. for this conversation to even occur. And it's 13.8 billion years of cosmic evolution. Mm -hmm. Like the big bang happened. We know that, you know, people talk about the big bang theory. It's not a theory. We've proven that it's happened. The, the big question, and I'm not here to debate it is how did it get here? How did it <laughs> yeah. get here? Was that a guy with a beard and a robe magic wave his magic wand or was it scientific evolution? We don't know. Right. But or, or that's, a mix of both. Who knows? Right, whatever. That's the debate. Right. <laughs> but what we do know is the big bang happened. And if, and if God created the universe, mm -hmm. this, he did it this way. Right. We had the big bang then hot white plasma went everywhere and then due to gravity the atoms came together and then through evolution i mean i'll skip a lot of steps but the spark notes version is <laughs> we have nebula and then stars are created in the nebula and then the stars expand and when they eventually blow up they create supernova and that's where all the elements are formed when all the elements are formed floating in space you all the gravity they bring them together and then planets are formed and then from there on, eventually there's the, you know, evolution with, you know, how did fatty acids get on the planet? We don't know. Meteorites maybe. And then RNA turned to DNA. And then now here we are. And then <laughs> your, your great, great, great grandma had to meet your great, great, great grandpa mm -hmm. and four on. And then they had to move to Utah and then we had to connect to the university of Utah. Then, mm -hmm. you know, there had to be, um, so technological evolution where we had to have smartphones, then Instagram, then we had to reconnect on Instagram. And then we had to have, I mean, the fact that we even have podcasts now wasn't even a thing 20 years ago. And it's just like, 
<laughs> for everything to line up perfectly is, it's has nothing i mean it's insane it, it's, yeah it's, you it's can't comprehend insane. it it's, it's the probability of this happening is absolutely insane and this moment around you if you look outside of the mm. trees or whatever if you weren't here it would still be happening <laughs> right i love that yeah and was life happening before you were here yeah is life going to happen after you die yes sir and if you look at the grand cosmic scale of how big the universe is so for example in our in our ga- in our solar system there's the, the planets but in our own galaxy we we live in the milky way galaxy there's an estimated 500 million planets just in our galaxy there's an estimation using you know using the Hubble telescope that there's up to 2 trillion different galaxies 500 million planets that says the average size of a galaxy with two trillion. That's a one with probably like 18 zeros of how many planets there are in the universe. One with 18 zeros. If you took our entire planet away, Earth, the history of Earth, every person who's ever lived, every piece of art that was ever created, <laughs> every song that was ever made, everything that had ever happened to the known world and just eliminated from the universe wouldn't even make it scratch. We'd have no, no one, the universe would have no idea. Like life happened before you're here. Life happened after you die. It's not personal. It's not about you. You are the experiencer experiencing the experience. (laughs) I love that. And so what happens is we make life so personal Mm. and because of that we suffer. And so we just got to remember like part of the human experience is we have emotions and feel your emotions. Right. But if you can, choose to feel blissful or angry what emotion are you going to choose blissful right and you have the opportunity to do that Mm -hmm. it's just when you expect the moment in front of you like i said the reason we suffer is if the world isn't unfolding how we think it's supposed to which means we're taking it personal taking it personal but keep in mind there's 7.7 billion people on the planet right now Uh and they all have a different preference of how the world's supposed to be yeah We live on one arena. Earth is one arena. So, of course, the probability of the world unfolding exactly the way you think it's supposed to is zero. (laughs) It's just just not going to happen. And so to outsource your happiness to an event that has a probability of 0.0000001%, you're playing a game you're never going to win. And so once you let moments come in and go, right, and just experience them for what they are, you will be able to experience deep states of bliss and euphoria and connection and have a deep sense of curiosity, which really helps you maximize your human experience. Hmm. Dude, I love, (laughs) I love how you just break down. I know that was the cliff notes version, but just hearing that is profound. I mean, there's so much there, but the one that I just want to highlight is like not just rare, but completely improbable. Like, chances of this moment happening yeah and how you said like not to take it personal but i think it's so hard for us not to take it personal because like why do you think because we just see it because there's a story you've created in your head of how it's supposed to be and that Mm -hmm. story came from the your experiences it's all you have so when you were Mm. you know one of my favorite things is you think about like okay what's your first memory Mm. right you're probably three or four years old now, 20 years of memories, right? Mm -hmm. No one, you have memories in your head that no one will ever know. Legit. And these memories and these experiences shape your worldview. And everyone has a different worldview based upon these experiences, right? So of course the world isn't going to unfold the way you think it is or how it's supposed to. It's because no two people have the exact same experiences or memories Mm -hmm. or worldviews. And so many of our worldviews are so, 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 so subconscious. Yeah, we don't know that we have them. Right. And so everyone's projecting on their way the world's supposed to be on everyone else. And it's 7.7 billion people all throwing their stuff on this one arena. Like, this is not happening. So is the solution just like individual work? Like, hey, everyone. Yeah, do your work. Like, yeah, you know, what are, like we talked about at the beginning of the podcast, like what's your story? Mm-hmm. You know, what would you be ashamed if the world found out about? Right. What are you trying to hide from the world? Right. Wonderful question. What secret are you trying to keep? You know, <laughs> so I you always ask yourself, how yeah. does the world need to unfold for me to be happy? Ooh, right? repeat that one more time. How does the world need to unfold for me to be happy? And ask yourself that question. And you're going to create a really big list, 
right? Damn, dude, that's good. I want this partner and I want to have this house and yada, yada, yada. You're going to give me this crazy list, right? Of like, I want a jet and I want a Ferrari and I want to have a house in Maui and yada, yada, yada. But here's the thing. If you don't feel mm. good inside, it doesn't matter. If you think marriage is the answer to your problems, go ask married people how it's going. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. You want to, f- everyone just wants to feel good inside. Yep. So how do you feel good inside is you surrender your life and surrender your experience, realize it has nothing to do with you and just experience the experience, right? And then, because I think some people will, this they might have this feeling of like disempowerment. Yeah. Will you explain why this is an incredibly empowering? Yeah, because you understand, you know, I think when you, there are states inside of you when you do your work, um, natural states of excitement and joy and happiness and love when you do your work it allows you to be open and Mm -hmm. you almost have like this electrical beam moving up through you think about when you're think of the most beautiful romantic date you've ever been on to with when you felt in love Mm -hmm. how much energy do you have oh dude you're freaking king of the world right (laughs) those are natural states and so the natural expression of love is it wants to express itself and share that with other people so people might think like, okay, I, if I do all this work and practice non-attachment, I'm just going to go meditate in the woods. Yes, it's like, yes. no, you're not going to do that at all. Mm-hmm. You're going to be so full of happiness and love and connection and joy and enthusiasm. You're going to talk to every stranger and you want to have the confidence to create your own business and you want to go hike in the mountains and you want to go say, go visit your grandma and learn about, I mean, you want to go do all the things. So it's actually mm-hmm. the exact opposite of what people think that what's going to happen. Love it. Because like I said, the natural express, the natural, the natural state of love is expression. Yeah. Mm. Dang, dude, that's dope. Like, yeah. what? So when you just kind of made a list of things, of expression, like expressing that love. Yeah, you've done it in your business. You talked about golf. Where else have you like expanded your expression? Yeah, it's just I'm, I love I love staying curious. You know, I love mm-hmm. reading science fiction novels. You know, because I just got to keep in mind, like, I am a passenger on this planet. Right, I'm going to die. I'm literally just visiting here. Like I'm literally just visiting earth Mm -hmm. and you know, I like to think of, you know, what if, and this is just a crazy conspiracy, what if theory, Mm -hmm. right? What if the earth is literally, we're trying to move across the universe and someone created this immaculate planet earth. And instead of just us sitting on earth for a billion years, as we travel across the country, we all forgot what was going on. And then we just become passengers on a spaceship that's flying through earth. We're probably on a really sophisticated spaceship right now. Who knows? (laughs) And Mm -hmm. in the meantime, while I'm here, I like to think of the entire planet Earth as Disneyland. Mm. And if you're eight years old and you're in Disneyland, you want to go do Disneyland. You want to ride all the rides and taste all the food and take pictures of all the characters, right? Mm. And so it's like, okay, I'm just visiting here on this planet. I want to go experience humanness, right? And so often not, we're attached to our human body. Like, I don't believe, like, I believe I know I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. I'm not my body. Mm-hmm. My body's going to go to the ground one day. Hopefully. I don't know. But hopefully my essence of my soul lives forever. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, my experience of Doug is going to end. <laughs> yeah. And so what am I going to do with Doug before that ends? I don't know. I like reading sci-fi novels and cooking <laughs> good food and playing golf and drinking yeah. beer with my friends and going to pool mm-hmm. parties and starting a business and traveling and go to the mountains. You know, it's like, yeah, what, what sets your soul mm-hmm. on fire? What do you want to do? But too often than mm-hmm. not, the reason we don't do those things is because we're caught up in our stories of how the world's supposed to be. So we suffer and we don't ex- have the natural full expression of ourselves because we're blocked. Mm. I love that, dude. What's something, because now you're a one-on-one coach now and it's relatively new for you, right? Yeah, I've had my first time I hired a client was last November. So it's been almost a year. Cool. Yeah. So what what surprised you? Like what transformation or what story it's just like, whoa, I can't believe that that's real. Yeah. And I think just the coaching in general was, it was, I mean, it was imposter syndrome at first. Yes. Because the, the way I got my first, <laughs> I understand. my first client <laughs> was, it was just someone being like, hey, will you work with me? I was, wasn't even, I didn't even have a coaching program set up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I guess. And then just working with that person, I overestimated how much work I've really done and how much knowledge I've actually gathered mm. because once, you know, when I'm repetitive reading and learning about personal development, it kind of got ingrained in my head and it kind of turned into common sense. But what's common sense for me might not be common sense to someone else. Mm-hmm. And so when I, you know, 
studied really hard and took my first client through the course and it's profound. Like it's life changing for this person. And to me, it was so common sense. And I was like, wow, I think I, you know, got to remember I've done the work and I should be proud of it. And I shouldn't overestimate what I've done. And so now I've got a full client book, you know, I'm meeting with clients almost every single day and I just have so much more confidence in myself. And I've just realized like people need this work. People need help and is, you know, whoever's listening to this has done some, um, yeah. some level of personal development. Yeah. And I would just say, don't overestimate or don't underestimate the mm-hmm. work you've done. Cause I, promise you there's some a breakthrough you've had recently that you can share with someone else that can dramatically improve their lives that yeah like we're all on different parts of our journey right you know you've talked about death a lot uh, or mentioned a few times right um what is your relationship with death i'm excited for death <laughs> i don't want it to come for a long time interesting so i mean i love that answer I'm very Why? curious Ooh, curious i'm very curious what happens mm. i think it'll be exciting I mean, I'm, I love being Doug. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. I hopefully I've got another 60 years in me. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm very curious what's going to happen. I think it's going to be really cool and really exciting what happens. And, you know, I always like to think, you know, 93% of every human who's ever lived is now dead. So 93% of the people know what happens. Mm-hmm. We're a part of the 7%. We're part of the minority that, do- that doesn't know yet. And so mm. I don't think anyone knows. I think it's so beyond anything we could ever possibly comprehend. It's so there's no way you can put in into words what death mm-hmm. is or what God is, or I think it's ignorant to say that, you know, what God is. Um, so I don't know. I think I, I do want to yeah. get to a point that when I'm on my deathbed where it's like, I, I freaking earned this, mm. like take me, I earned it. You That's know? cool. How do you view it um, with others beyond yourself? like with your dad passing mm-hmm. or like other people, um, you know, cause we're like, I've associated and, and worked with a few people who've had like three close people to them, whether it's family or really close loved ones mm-hmm. die in 2020. Yeah. I had five people in my network die in May. What? Mm-hmm. Three suicides and then two other crazy deaths. So please tell us how, what is your thinking slash feeling with that? Yeah, I mean it's difficult. I mean, it loss is mm-hmm. loss is intense, and losses can be confusing. And um, I think twenty twenty put a lot of people over the edge. Yeah, and I think a lot of it had to do with you know it really for me at least emphasized the importance of the work I'm doing. You know, and so that was a good reminder. You know, that was encouraging for me. Where it's like, okay, I've seen the work I've seen the results from some of the people I've worked with. And so, you know, I do have, I do feel called to help the planet heal in whatever sense I can do that in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just one of those things where you can't make sense of it. You know, I don't, I don't, it's not like I can go to the, you know, my friend's mom and be like, I know where he is. He's yeah. okay. I'm like, I don't freaking know. It's possible when the lights that we die, when the light, the lights go off forever, it's totally possible. I don't know, but, um, I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> I think it's more fun to think that there's more to this, but, uh, yeah, I just, my relationship with death is, is I'm continuing to build it, but I think everyone needs to build a relationship with death because everyone's going to die. You know, so that's no one's getting out of here alive. Mm-hmm. What's, do you know the number one cause of death? I have no idea. Birth. Ha. Ha. I love that. <laughs> right. It's, a, it's true. It's true. It's true. When do you feel like the most free? The most free? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of a, a specific moment recently. Mm. There was, I was playing a really good round of golf uh-huh. up at Mountaindale here, which is a park a golf course near Park City. And actually, Jer- I, and I was playing at Jeremy Ranch. Actually, I know exactly what moment I'm thinking of. <laughs> I was playing golf at Jeremy Ranch with three of my friends. And it was like 4.30, almost, you know, when this starts to get a little bit chilly and there's beaut. I mean, it was mm. incredible yellows and reds and the course is so well. And we're kind of back in the canyon and I was on the green and I turned around mm. and I just closed my eyes and I opened up my arms and I yes. just like took in the whole moment. It was so beautiful. And I'm just like, yeah, I love being human, especially in Utah in the fall. And uh, yeah, that was 
I felt really, really free, really grateful in that moment. I love that. But I think I like to, I feel like I'm pretty free all the time. Cause you're in the moment. Not always, you know, but like, of course, you know, I'm still human. You know, (laughs) I still make mistakes. I still get angry and aggro and I get mad when, you know, when do you get angry? I don't get angry. I would say angry. <laughs> irritated is a better word. Okay, when do you get irritated? Yeah, like I just matched on this match with this really pretty girl on Hinge. <laughs> and then she ghosted me. I Dude, was like, dang. I feel it. I was irritated. I feel it. <laughs> I was like, you're such a bayo. I'd love to to meet you. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, she ghosted me, which is fine. <laughs> Part of the human experience. That's awesome, dude. What is... So you've done this healing work and you've... I know it's really important and I'm so stoked that you shared this whole experience, you know, when you were six and your friend was eight and now, you know, bonding with male friends. That's something that we don't talk a lot about. I think like it's definitely happening. I got to applaud you. Doug just set down the glass (laughs) majestically. (laughs) So I don't want to make any noise. I love it. Yeah. So like what have like, what has this experience been for you? Like, have you opened up to other like men and friends or how has this manifested? Yeah, I think, and I don't know if this is, I do want to make this point. I don't know if this is the mm-hmm. point to do it, but I think I can put it here where it's just, yeah, it's for sure manifested and I've met, it's been easier for me to make friends, but I think what happens a lot in the healing space is we get stuck on the wheel of healing. Yes. And trying to fix, trying to fix, right. trying to fix. What's the next breakthrough? I got to yep. work on this. Cause really you're, you're missing the point. Like the reason you go heal is to improve the quality of your life. And so many people are always into the next ceremony and the yeah. next healing thing and the next this. And they, they're, what they're really doing is they're scared to go live their lives. You know, one of my favorite quotes is, and it's my own quote. I'm going to quote myself, but <laughs> I love it. Yeah. you know, your Kundalini practice is amazing. Uh-huh. but rent still do on the first, mm. right? Like, yes, do the healing work. Yes. Have your rituals. But like in today's society, we live in 2020 and we have credit cards and we have rent and we have people to support. And mm-hmm. it's like, yes, go on your healing journey. Yes. Do that. But like when you get to a point where it's, you get to a point where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm done. Like not that you're ever done, but like I've done enough to improve the quality of my life. And it's the 80, 20 rules, the same to implement. Yeah. Implement, right. Yeah. The, 80, the 80, 20 rule is the same in healing as it is in anything, right? You've all heard of the 80, 20, you get 80% of your sales from 20% of your clients or 80% of your production on 20% effort. So the same in healing where it's, you get 80% of your breakthroughs on aha moments in the initial 20% of you doing healing work. If you've never done healing work ever, and then you get into it, your major breakthroughs are going to come in the first 20%. And what the mistake people make is they waste the remaining 80% of their time chasing Mm. that elusive 20% of healing. Because it feels good too. Yeah. But in the meantime, they're, and, and they can postpone their life. It's like, they don't have to go do the hard thing. They don't have to go have the hard conversation at work. They don't have to, you know, look at their finances or really excel because, you know, because they're so stuck on healing. And so, we use it as a crutch mm. to not really go do life because life's hard, right? If you want to live an exceptional life, you have to do the hard habits, right? If you want to start a business, it's a lot of freaking work and it's really easy to mask the real hard work. It's like, oh, I've got to go to the retreat or whatever, yada, yada, yada. Like I'm into retreats. I think they're very powerful, but if you're doing a retreat every three weeks, like you're missing the point. And so, mm-hmm. Um, like I said, 80, 20 rule, hundred percent. And I think the biggest break, you know, takeaway from all this for me is mm-hmm. I'm at the point where it's like, okay, I've done so much healing work. I'm going to get off the healing work train for a little bit mm-hmm. and go drink beer and play golf with my friends. Cool. And I think it's just, I want to make that note too, of people doing healing work where it's like, yeah, there's amazing people that are willing to help you heal. But the purpose of life is life. Go enjoy your life. It's never going to be absolutely perfect and you're never going to be fully healed. This is not going to happen, you know? So do the heavy lifting, get 80% of the junk out of the way, you know, and go, go live your life. I love that dude. Yeah. Well, is there anything that you'd feel really called and implored to share, to share? Um, I would just say, 
whatever that thing is that's kind of like on your mind to the listeners that's kind of like a hunch take this as a sign from the universe Mm. me saying right now to do it listen to your inner voice whether it's to go on a retreat whether it's to sign up for therapy whether it's to sign up for a course or to ask that person out or to join the membership at the gym whatever like you're scared to do lean into it because Mm -hmm. i think fear is a prerequisite to courage boom and so whatever is on your mind take this as a, this is the universe speaking i love that this is the sign you are looking for <laughs> yeah no really though like i wholeheartedly second that have you ever said fear is the prerequisite to courage no i read it in a book but i don't remember which book okay because i because i was like i wrote that down the other day i'm like dude me and you are yeah. on the same wave a lot of the time yeah i don't remember where i found that but i remember read that and I'm like oh, that's a good quote and that's the same thing when i read so i'm yeah. like i don't know if this is me or yeah. someone See, else it's, but it's, it's, all, like, it's all the same yeah it's all borrowed anyway yeah. like no idea is yeah. original yeah but you did so make sure you quote doug though because you did kundalini practice is amazing <laughs> but rents still do on the first <laughs> i love it man well doug thank you for sharing some deep parts of you yeah um the vulnerable parts and like the fun, like the fun parts too. I think that's, what's cool. It's like, it's just a well-rounded approach to the human experience. Yeah. And I answer all my DMS on Instagram. So if you have any questions about me, just hit me up at Doug underscore Cartwright. And I promise I'll answer your DM usually with a voice memo. Um, and then they can also find my app in the app store, Apple only the daily shifts and our Instagram on the daily shifts post a lot of really positive content um, at the daily shifts too. And sign up for your newsletter too. Yeah. It's newsletter really good. Is the daily shift. Thank you. The daily shift. We just did a post today on how to have um, um, safe, constructive conversations during the political time right now. So not, to, not to have contentious conversations. So that was a really good article that went out. Um, yeah. Go to the daily shifts.com and you can watch my webinar or you can uh, sign up for my newsletter. That's dope, dude. So one last question for you, because you asked a lot of good questions um to people to start like reflecting on like what don't what don't i want people to find out Mm -hmm. right so what i'm just curious what feeling are you trying to avoid right now is Um, there any yeah i think the feeling right now in this moment i mean I would just say the feeling I'm trying to avoid right now is actually it's physical. Mm. I didn't, I didn't eat very healthy this weekend. I went out and drank too (laughs) and my body's feeling it Uh and it like is kind of giving me like, you know, and I saw like the feeling I need to avoid is feeling lethargic and sluggish. So that's why you denied my cookie offer. That's why I denied your cookie (laughs) offer. Right. It's cause I'm like, I don't, I don't like feeling the sluggish right now. And so, um, because it triggers, you know, my, my story I'm aware of is I'm the fat kid, right? Mm. And if I'm the fat kid, then I'm unlovable. So I have to hurry and look really, really good because if I don't look good, then people won't love me. So it's a story I'm aware of that's still playing out. Right. And mm-hmm. so I'm way more conscious about it, but I just, I know I need to go get a good, like hot yoga session Dude, to sweat out the weekend. Morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, psych. One more question. Damn, but I just forgot it. So it must have not have been important. <laughs> um, yeah dude anyway like yeah just thank you for sharing just your heart with me and with everyone yeah like for other like i personally appreciate it you're obviously an amazing human amazing soul amazing doug experiencing doug and ben experiencing doug (laughs) thanks man so yeah dude i just appreciate it and i have so much love and like admiration and respect like how you do things so thank you for being an example of course Anytime, my friend. This was fun. Dude, thank you. Much love. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and any other YouTube things. You know the deal. You know what to do. So thank you so much for being here. And watch one of these videos on the screen. Woo, woo, woo. Watch these videos. Love you so much.